Jesus is. Don't be playing 
church. Don't just come here to be seen. Don't just come here to make a dollar. But come to connect to him. suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse 13 says, verse 12 rather, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You may be seated. Again, as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, yourselves likewise with the same mind. But then think it not strange concerning the fiery trial with this to try as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Brothers and sisters, as we look at this, and one thing I have <coughs> realized throughout my life is that there is a question that has baffled the minds of many people throughout the years of our lives. And that question simply is, why do good things, excuse me, why do bad things happen to good people? We've all wondered that. Why do bad things happen to good people? Well, let me say this. I really don't have a philosophical answer to that question. I don't have a psychological, a political, a sociological, nor even a psychoanalytical answer to the question. But I do have a few script references, a few scriptural references that I believe are pertinent to that question. 
First of all, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says this. Our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. The key word, brothers and sisters, is whom. And when it says whom he may devour, I want you to understand that that word whom is inclusive of all of us. He walks as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Whether he's talking about me, talking about you, the saved, the unsaved, the intelligent, the illiterate, the churched, the unchurched, the husband, the wife, the kids, the boss, the employees, the rich, the poor, the black, the white, the brown, the red, the pastor, the congregation, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. He is seeking whom he may devour. And can I tell you something? He is walking around right now looking for and waiting on the opportunity to try and devour all that he can. So don't ever think that you are out of harm's way. Because can I tell you something? He not only walks around outside, but he also walks around inside. Because can I tell you something? The devil, he hit this around with some people every now and then. Sometimes he'll hit the ride with somebody to come to the church house. Because even in the church house, you're still not safe from the devil. Because if your mind is not in here, that's an opportunity for the devil to come at you. If your heart is not in here, that's an opportunity for the devil to come at you. He's always seeking for the time and the opportunity to come and try and destroy everything there is about you and I. Right. Can I tell you something? He not only walks outside, he not only walks in the church house, but guess what? Sometimes he'll walk in your house. He'll walk down your hallway. He'll walk through your bedroom. He'll walk through the kitchen. I wish I had some help up in here. The devil walks about. That's a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He's waiting on an opportunity. Even while you're sleeping. He's waiting on an opportunity to devour you. And sisters, that's why you need to know Jesus. That's why we need to know the Lord because we need help. We need help from heaven to overcome and to defeat the devil that comes our way. That's right. So sisters, I want you to understand. <clears throat> He's always going to try and target the good to make them bad. But he'll target the bad just to destroy the good. Brothers and sisters, don't get it twisted. You're not too saved to keep the devil away. You're not too anointed to keep the devil away. You're not too guilty to keep the devil away. Because he will come waiting on an opportunity when you are distracted, when you're mad, when you're upset. He's waiting on an opportunity to come at your weakest moment, to come at your moment of frustration, at your moment of anxiety. He's coming, waiting on that moment to start messing with your mind. 
And as he began to mess with your mind and manipulate your thoughts, he, he slowly would try to creep into your heart. Yes. Brothers and sisters, that's why we need the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because the Holy Ghost, he helps to guard our heart. When we need the Holy Ghost, we need the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is stronger than you and I. But we need help from heaven, brothers and sisters. Again, again, the adversary, our adversary, our adversary, just in case you didn't understand, he is our enemy. Yes. That's right. Devil is not your friend. Amen. Someone said you, you, you can't play games with the devil. Because for one thing, the devil does not play fast. So you better watch how some of y'all playing pity pack with the devil. Some of y'all walking, holding hands with the devil. Some of y'all trying to play tag with the devil. But can I tell you something? You better stop playing with the devil. Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, it's only a matter of time before the devil takes you out of here. And sister, we need the Holy Ghost. For again, 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 this thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The sisters, the second thing is, it's recorded in 2 Timothy 3 and 12. It says that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, so again now, being saved doesn't keep the devil away. But being saved does not keep the devil from coming at you. Because even if you're saved, he's coming your way. Looking for the opportunity to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The third thing, brothers and sisters, in Matthew 5, 45, it says, God makes his son to rise on the evil and the good. Amen. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust. Let me back it up say it again. He makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. So then brothers and sisters, what this tells us is, it don't matter who you are, trouble gonna come your way. And it doesn't matter where you come from, rain is gonna come your way. It don't matter who you are, there's only a matter of time before the storm comes in your direction. Brothers and sisters, none of us are excluded from trouble. That's right. None of us are excluded from having pain to come to our heart, to our lives, to our hearts. All of us in here are susceptible to the trials and tribulations of life. Amen. Amen. Sisters, bad things will happen right. to good people. That's right. It's only a matter of time. Don't, 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 don't get on your high horse and think that you're untouchable. Because can I tell you something? Even with your good looking self, you are not untouchable. Even with your good preaching self, you are not untouchable. Even with your good singing self, you are not untouchable. Even with your last name, your last name ain't untouchable. Can I tell you something? He's waiting on the opportunity to come. Not only, again, do we have to uh, keep in mind that the devil is, 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 is out there, but, but there are times when God himself will allow come on now. the storms of life to come our way. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand something. Psalm 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I'm going to pause right there. Even righteous folk will be afflicted. Amen. Sage folk 
will experience afflictions. Anointed people will experience afflictions. Gifted Holy Ghost people will experience afflictions. Tongue talking, power walking Christians will experience afflictions. But the good thing here, the text goes on to say, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. In other words, yeah, it's going to come. But the good thing is, you don't have to face it by yourself. You don't have to face trouble by yourself. You don't have to face pain by yourself. You don't have to face disappointment by yourself. You don't have to face hard times by yourself. You ain't got to experience the law by yourself. Because the good thing is, God is right there with you. If you're on the Lord's side, the Lord is walking with you, even as you go through those hard times in life. It is good to know that as we walk with him, he's walking with us. It's good to know that we don't have to go through by ourselves. Anybody glad about that? How many of y'all are glad that you don't have to go through by yourself? Anybody glad that you don't have to face the storm by yourself? Anybody glad that you don't have to face the devil by yourself? Anybody glad you don't have to face the pain of life by yourself? How many in here are glad that you don't have to walk by yourself? That the Lord, that my spirit, that the Son that He walks with me, that He talks with me, that He tells me that I am. Thank you, Jesus. His own. Yes. Singles and sisters, you don't have to face life by yourself. Somebody need to hear this. You don't have to face life by yourself. Let me back it up, say it again. You don't have to face life by yourself. Let me back it up, say it one more time. You don't have to face life by yourself. That stuff at home, you ain't got to face it by yourself. That stuff on the job, you ain't got to face it by yourself. What the doctor said, you ain't got to face it by yourself. He walks with you. He talks with you. And because you belong to him, the Lord takes care of his own. He takes care of his own. That's why you're still here. That's why you're still in your right mind. Because he takes care of his own. Then that's why you didn't lose it when you lost it. Let me back it up say it again. That's why you didn't lose it when you lost it. Let me back it up. That's why you didn't lose it when you lost it. Because he's with you. He, he takes care of his own. To, to you that are going through right now, he takes care of his own. To, to you that are down and out, he takes care of his own. To you that are depressed, stressed, oppressed, he takes care of his own. It's just a season. Where you are right now, it's just a season. Where you are, it's just a season. Sisters, I need y'all to understand. There are some things that the devil does. But then there are other things that either God does or God allows. The problem is not about what happens. Sometimes the problem is not knowing why it happens. The issue is, we as a people have a tendency to think that being a Christian or even being a morally good person exempts us from pain and suffering. That, 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 that's the perception that we have. Because we're saved, we shouldn't have to go through anything. But because we love God, we shouldn't have to go through anything. Because we go to church, we shouldn't have to go through anything. But can I tell you something? Yeah. Come on now. Clean it up. Sometimes yeah. he allowed these things to happen to you and I. Just so so not only that he already knows who we are, but sometimes he wanna show us who we really are. Yeah. So sometimes he wanna 
show others who we really are. So, so he allows things to come our way. So sisters, not only is pain and suffering a part of life, but even more so, it's a part of the believer's life. Let me back up, say it again. Pain and suffering is not just a part of life, but it is more so a part of the believer's life. Watch this. Pain and suffering, it helps us to identify with Christ. Romans 8, 14 says it like this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And because of the Spirit, we are adopted into the family of God. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So again, brothers and sisters, pain and suffering helps us to identify with Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's not only, brothers and sisters, the thing that identifies us with Christ, but suffering is also a prerequisite for glory. You hear people say all the time, you, 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 you see my glory, but you don't know my story. Amen. People say, you, you, you don't look like what you've been through. You, 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 you see what I am, but you don't know where I've been. You, 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 see, you see where I am, but you don't know what I had to go through to get to where I am. You, you, you see what I look like now, but you didn't know what I looked like then. You, you, you see the glory, but you don't know my story. You don't know what I had to go through to get to where I am. Hey. 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 Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey. Anybody ever had to go through anything? Can anybody look at the life and who you look at where you are now? Can anybody say, I don't look like what I've been through? Can, can you say, you don't look like what you've been through? Can, can you say, you look better than what you went? Can anybody testify that God has been good to you? Understand. Suffering is a prerequisite for glory. Mm -hmm. Well, watch this. Romans 8, 18 says it like this. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I can say it again. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. Which, let me back it up. Listen, listen. The suffering of this present time. It can't compare to the glory which shall be revealed in us. The suffering of right now. It can't be compared to the glory that shall be. The suffering right now shall it can be compared to the glory that's coming. But the suffering right now. Where I am right now, it can't be compared to where I will be later on. Well, what I'm going through right now, it can't be compared to, to where God is taking me to later on. But what I'm going through right now, it, it can't be compared. What is 
cannot be compared to what shall be. Let me put it to you like, what, what, what is the present tense? It can't be compared to what shall be. The future tense. Don't let what you're going through right now take away your hope for your future. Don't let what you're going through right now cloud your view of your future. Don't let what you're going through right now cause you to think that it won't get better. It's only a matter of time. What is can't be compared to what shall be. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is the Bible. For I reckon that the sufferings that are right now, it can't be compared to the glory that there shall be. Oh. I know it's tough, but it's not going to be tough always. I think it was Melvin Williams said it won't be a storm always. Brothers and sisters, 2 Timothy 2 and 12 says this, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. But sisters, again, suffering is a prerequisite to glory. All right. Hang in there, brothers and sisters. Yes. I, I know you want to throw in a towel, but, but hang in there. Amen. I know you want to throw up your hands, but, but hang in there. Amen. I know you're tired, mm. you're frustrated. But we're hanging there. Yeah. I know you want to call it quits. But we're hanging there. I know you're tired of spinning your wheels. But we're hanging there. I know you're tired of going in circles. Hallelujah. But we're hanging there. I know it gets rough sometimes. But but hang in there. I know it get tough sometimes. But but hang in there. I know the tears just continue to flow sometimes. But 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 hang in there. I know they say it this about you. But hang in there. They lied on you. But hang in there. They spread rumors on you. But hang in there. They don't appreciate you. But hang in there. They put you down. But hang in there. You can't get the loan. But hang in there. They Despite the doctor's report, yes. hanging there, yes. despite the amount of medication you're taking on a daily basis, hanging there. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hang in there. Yes. Don't let go. Don't let go. Even when it seems like the rope is about to break, I'm going to tell you what I heard somebody say. At some point, you've got to reach beyond the break. Good God Almighty, don't you dare let go. Just reach beyond the break. Don't you dare let it go. I don't care how many strands are coming loose. Reach beyond the break. You hung in there too long to give up. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't let go. Hang in there. Hang on in there. Yeah. Thank you, God. Reach beyond the break. You're hanging. Seem like it's about to break. No, reach beyond the break. Yes. You, you hung too long just to fall off now. Yes. You, you hung in there too long to die right now. 
You hung in there too long to lose your mind right now. You hung in there too long to lose your sanity right now. You hung in there too long to stop dreaming right now. You hung in there too long to stop hoping right now. You hung in there too long to stop reaching right now. To stop pressing right now. To stop pushing right now. Reach beyond the break. Keep on holding. Keep on Y'all first begin where? At the house of the Lord. He's going to allow the trials and tribulations to come to us first. He's going to allow the struggles of this life or this world to come to us first. The temptations, the test is going to come to us first again. And they that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. Sisters, it's imperative that you understand that as a Christian, you don't always suffer because of what you have done. Sometimes you simply suffer because of who you are. Hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Hear this, hear this. You don't always just suffer because of what you've done, you've done something wrong. Sometimes you suffer simply because of who you are. Amen. Amen. And they that would live godly yeah. shall suffer persecution. Amen. Right. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes, mm -hmm. Sometimes you just suffer simply because of who you are. Mm -hmm. Simply because you live godly, Simply because you're righteous, simply because you're a child of God, that's why a lot of times suffering comes your way, not because of what you've done, but sometimes simply because of who you are. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand, suffering indeed can be consequential, yes. meaning the result of bad decisions. Amen and bad choices that we have made. And let's be honest, all of us have made some bad decisions. Amen. Let me back it up because I didn't hear everybody. Amen. All of us have made some bad decisions. Amen. Let me back up seven more times and there's still four y'all that will hold your mouth. All of us in here have made some bad decisions. Do I need to call a three of y'all name out? All of us in here have made some bad decisions. All of us have made some bad choices in our lives. Talk to me, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? Any of y'all have made some bad, I don't see it by 10. I'm 
getting about to get mad, about to call some folk out. All of us in here have made some bad decisions, we made some bad choices. All of us in here have done some bad stuff, some wrong stuff. All of us have come short of the glory of God. All of us have made some bad decisions. Talk to me, somebody. Some of us are still feeling the effects of the bad decisions we made. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. They told God, told you about him before you married him. But you married him anyway. God, God told you about her before you asked her daddy for his for hand in marriage. He told you, but, but no, I can't help her. And now you're wondering what the brain of the brain of the brain was I thinking? Talk to me, somebody. Think about who some of y'all had children by. All right, all right. And some of you are regretting it to this day. You love the child. Somebody, oh, don't get quiet now. They <laughs> know you're right. They told you not to drink and drive. Yeah. They did it in the house. Right. Then you got in the paper. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. They told you not to do marijuana, but they gave you a drug test, and guess what happened? some bad choices. They told you not to hang around him or her, but you want to hang around him or her anyway, and look at what happened to you. All of us have made some bad choices, some bad decisions. Boss told you, you need to be here on time tomorrow, or else. And then you got mad and told everybody they fired you for no reason. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Oh, they just had it out for me. No, they ain't have it out for you. You just didn't want to work. Wouldn't show up for your job. Wouldn't go to get there on time. Listen, all of us. Doctor told you don't eat no more of that stuff. Told you not to smoke anymore. Told you about drinking, but guess what? Did it in Now all your levels are off in your body. So much medication you're taking. So many ailments you had to experience because you would not do what the doctor advised you to do. You made some bad decisions. All of us have made some bad decisions. Talk to me, somebody. All of us. So sometimes our suffering is consequential. Based on the choice of bad choice of bad decision we made. But when there are other times when the suffering is providential. Meaning it is divinely orchestrated. Had nothing to do with what you did. But it's just divinely orchestrated. It's not consequential, it's providential. Amen. God orchestrated those moments of suffering to come to your life. He orchestrated those moments of pain and frustration to come to your life. He orchestrated those times of, 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 of those down times and, and those times of, of despair. He orchestrated that for a reason that was bigger than you. That's why the text says, 
thinking not strange yes. mm. concerning the fiery trial yes. which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. How many times have you asked the question, why me? How many times you wonder, what did I do wrong? What did I do to have to go through what I'm going through? What, what, what did I do for all of this to come on me? You, you're trying to put your finger on it, but you just can't find the reason are the root cause of the pain or problem that you're facing. Now, it would not have been so bad if you had seen it coming. But what do you do when it catches you off guard? Anybody ever been caught off guard before? Anybody had pain to catch you off guard? Anybody ever had suffering to catch you off guard? Anybody ever had frustration to catch you off guard? Sometimes the problem will catch you off guard. What do you do when it not only catches you off guard, but it becomes perpetual and seems like it's not going to ever end? Brothers and sisters, not only can it make you question what you have done, but sometimes it can make you question who you are. And yet the more you focus on the pain, the more you focus on the problem and the suffering, then the more the devil starts to play with your mind. The more you focus on the problem, the more you focus on the pain and the struggle, now the devil starts to play with your mind, manipulate your thoughts even the more. Manipulate your thinking to the point that not only do you doubt yourself, but then you began to doubt God. Anybody ever doubted yourself before? Have you ever doubted yourself so much that you began to doubt God? Anybody ever doubted God before besides me? Amen. Anybody going to be honest enough to say that you have doubted God before? Amen. Amen. So sisters, the reality is pain is not always consequential. Suffering is not always consequential. Sometimes it's providential. God will allow things to come your way, not to break you, but to build you. Not to destroy you, but to prune you. Not to disannul you, but to confirm you. Not to disregard you, but to refine you. Not to eradicate you, but rather for you to glorify him. Brothers and sisters, sometimes your suffering and your pain, it makes you a relative and more identifiable with others in their time of affliction, Amen. in their times of suffering. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, sometimes being sympathetic is not enough. Sometimes you gotta be able to put yourself in their shoes. Not just mentally, but because you have already been where they've been. And because you have been where they've been, now you know what they're going through. You don't know how they feel, but you know what they're going through. You understand the struggle. You understand the pain. You understand the frustration. Now it makes you more, not just sympathetic, but it makes you more understanding of why they say what they say and why they do what they do because you have been where they are at right now. Brothers and sisters, please understand you won't know how it feels to lose a mother. 
unless you have lost a mother yourself. You will know how to feel to lose a father unless you have lost a father yourself. You, you will know how to feel to lose a sibling or lose a child unless you have lost them yourself. You don't know how to feel to lose a best friend unless you have lost it yourself. And when you had lost it, the only thing you normally say, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just hang in there. Mm -hmm. You're going to be all right. Yeah, but it's different. But it's a different story yeah. when you've been there. Right. Now, now, now you ain't just telling them to hang in there. Now, 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 now you're saying, my shoulder's here for you. Now, 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 now you're saying, you, you ain't going to go through this by yourself. I got you. I'm a one with you because I know how I know what you're going through. I feel your pain. I've been there. Baby, you gonna make it because if I made it, you gonna make it. If God kept me, He's gonna keep you. If I'm smiling, you gonna smile. If I made it, you gonna make it. Now you can identify yes. Yes. with them. Sometimes you have to lose some things and lose some stuff so that you can identify with other people. Because sometimes you get so prim and proper that you can't relate to anybody. Sometimes you're so up in it, you can't relate to anybody. So sometimes your nose is so up in the air, you can't relate to anybody. As a matter of fact, you, you look at them like they crazy. But the truth is, you're the one that's crazy. When you think it's all about you, you're the one that's crazy. When you think that you can't be touched, you're the one that's crazy. When you think that problems can't come your way, you are the one that's crazy. Keep on living. Keep on living. You're going to wipe the smirk off your face. Keep, keep on living. He gonna bring that long nose down. He can keep on living. He's gonna, he's gonna show you what, what it means to rely on God. He's gonna show you what it means to trust in God. He's gonna show you what it means to hold and depend on God. He's gonna show you that you can't make it in this life without God. He's gonna show you that you need God more than you realize that you need God. Yeah, yeah. Got it. This is the smirk. Is understand when our pain and suffering is providential and not just consequential. The text says for us to rejoice. Amen. As much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. As I close this, brothers and sisters, glory, the word glory, in this particular text, it comes from the word doxa. And doxa means praise, it means honor, it means magnificence, excellence, grace, power, divinity, manifestation of his perfect character and being. In other words, when pain and suffering come your way, and when it is providential, divinely orchestrated, when it comes your way, when it's providential, your suffering will not be in vain. Something good it's going to come out of it. When your pain and suffering is divinely orchestrated, something good is going to come out of it. There will be glory after the pain. There will be glory after the suffering. There will be glory after the tears. There will be glory after the sadness. There will be glory after the sorrow. There will be glory after the heartbreak and the heartache. There will be glory after 
First Peter 5 and 10 says it like this. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while. I'm going to back that up. Say that yes, First Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. After you have suffered a while, Amen. he's going to make you perfect. Yeah. He's going to establish you He's going to strengthen you. He's going to sell you. After you have suffered a while, he's going to make you perfect. He's going to make you complete. He's going to make you mature. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to sell you. Brothers and sisters, there's something good on the other side of your struggle. There's something good on the other side of your pain. Amen. All you have to do is endure mm -hmm. and hang in there Amen. a while longer. Amen. If Jesus hung in there, yes. we got to hang in there as well. Yes. Old song says, hang in there. Hold on, my brother. A change is going to come. Be strong, my sister, yes, yes. for your work is not done. Yes. Keep on believing and hold on tight. Yes. He's able to give you joy mm -hmm. in the morning light. Amen. Why? Because he's able. Yes, he, is. Yes. he is able. Yes, he, is. he is able. Yes, he, is. he is able. But you got to hang on in there. Hang on in there. My brother, hang on in there. My sister, hang on in there. It's hard right now, but hang on in there. You're hurting right now, but hang on in there. It's stressful right now, but hang on in there. Because there will be glory after this. For your struggle, your suffering, your pain, is a prerequisite to his glory for your life. Amen. But you have to hang on in there a while longer. Don't give up, brothers and sisters. Stay with the Lord. Amen. You don't understand it right now, but hang in there. It may not make sense right now, but hang in there. You may be down and out, but hang in there. Hang on in there, brothers and sisters. Hang on in there. As we stand all over the building, our youth sing that song that says, what you gonna do when your back's against the wall? Yes, sir. How you gonna smile when it seems our hope is lost? What are you going to do when you need a little more grace? How you, how you gonna respond when they try to test your faith? Simply this, hang on in there. Hang on in there. So I say to you, brother, sister, by the Spirit of God, hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Amen. For that which is cannot be compared to that which shall be. Amen. Not just only on the other side, but even on this side, right. if you stay with Jesus. Amen. For that which is cannot be compared to that which shall be. Hang on in there. Regardless of what it looks like, what he say, they say, she say, hang on in there. Hang on in there. Hang in there through the tears. Hang in there through 
through the pain. Hang in there. Because that will be glory. Look at this. If you say, or excuse me, if you're not saved, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, now is the perfect opportunity to get Jesus. Come connect to him now. You need him more than you realize. I admonish you. Don't gamble and go on through this year without Jesus. The reality of it is you might not make it to next week. We don't know when our last day is coming. But if I were you, I would get saved today. Amen. I would come back to Jesus today. It's a new day. Why not receive him so you can have a new life? It's a new day. A new year. So come to Jesus. say, preacher, this is my day for Jesus. You can come. Young or old, male or female, you can come. 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 And what I'm going to do now, we're definitely going to have a prayer. Say that to later. At this point now, we'll get ready to transition to our communion service. Remember, as Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, and he said to them, as he took the bread and gave thanks, as he broke it. Gave thanks for and told them to take eat. But this is my body that's broken for you. The Bible says, likewise, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, blessed and gave him thanks. This cup is the new testament of my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show my death to my God. Brothers and sisters, Paul goes on the right. Let a man, let a woman so examine him or herself. 